All right. Today we have Bianca Olivo. Bianca, give me a brief two minutes of who you are and just a little bit about your background. So I am Puerto Rican. Um, I'm from the Spaniards, Black and Taino, which are indigenous from the islands. Um, I'm a free spirited person who works really hard. I try to learn lessons from other people and from um, my own experiences. Um, I'm a key believer or one of my key beliefs is that uh, growth is one of the biggest things that you could always uh, uh, strive to achieve. So I'm always in a state of growth. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and there's a lot of Puerto Rican people on the west side of Cleveland. Have you ever been to Cleveland? Um, I have not been to Cleveland. But it's a ton of Puerto Rican people in, in Cleveland. And, you know, we have a great relationship with a lot of Puerto Rican people. And, and I don't really bump into a lot of Puerto Rican people. So it's it's an honor to have you on here. Now, you attended Virginia State in 2006 and you were on College Hill season three. How did that come about? How did you get on College Hill and, and how was that experience? So I actually didn't want to be on TV. I didn't know what College Hill was. I just knew that there was a TV show that was um, at our campus and they were doing interviews. Um, I was there, I was an older freshman. So I was very understanding of the fact that I needed to get in and get out. Um, I, at the time, was extremely poor. I um, didn't have my parents who were helping me with anything. Um, so I actually was about to be homeless. Um, and I was like living on random couches at the time. And um, they contacted me. Um, they asked me if I was interested, if I knew what it was. And I was like, yeah, I'm just here for a degree. Um, so my friends, I told my friends, they talked me into it. They were like, remember, in order to get the degree, you have to have somewhere to stay. So um, I actually went, attended the last few auditions that are, or I guess they were doing castings. So they had gone through a few rounds already. Um, and I had picked it up during like the last few sets of um their little auditions that they had. And they came to the school and they were like, hey, you're picked for College Hill. <laughs> now, how did they get in touch with you? We, we had email back then. I was in college probably a little bit before you as well. I, was, mm -hmm. I got there from 90, I wasn't there in 99. So I was there from 99 okay. to 06. But yeah. what, made, what made them pick you? Was it they had heard about you? Was it the look? You know, what was it? Interesting words, um, very uh, colorful language, um, asking them or yelling at people who they were honking at um, going down. So um, I know that they had that little snippet of me and I that they were just, I guess, filming different locations in the area and they had seen that. Um, I know a few times I had gone um, to the auditions just to pick up my friends and take them home because um, they were auditioning. Um, I kind of stood out a little bit. I had like bright blonde hair. My style was different. I didn't look like the typical person. Um, so um, I, I would expect that, that those would be things. The other thing was that I wasn't willing to pretend to be someone who I wasn't. I've always been very honest about who I am, very carefree. Um, and I don't believe in like faking the funk you know, just for the audience that's around you. So um, I would hope that that would have been one of the reasons that they selected me as well. Awesome. Awesome. Is it true you have your pilot's license? I do have a pilot's license. I got it in 2012 and it took me about uh, six months total. Um, I had a company that I was working for when I was in Afghanistan. I did ground safety. We had issues with the pilots. They didn't want to listen to some of the directives that I was giving. Um, their reasoning was that I wasn't a pilot. So they came to me and they were like, hey, do you mind going and getting a pilot's license? I asked a very simple question. Uh, who's going to pay for it? Yes, we'll handle honest. Um, I was in Florida doing flight school. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Now, now, what's the process? So if somebody wants to get their pilot's license. Tell me everything that you have to do. So the first thing that you need to do, um, well, there are actually various ways to go about getting a pilot's license. Um, so you can either go to the path where uh, you kind of study on your own. 
Um, and then with that, you need more hours. Uh, you have to find your own instructor. Um, so, so you get to school, there are two method of learning on your own, or you can go to a flight school. Uh, flight school, you have about a month, a month and a half of ground school. Um, after that, you get in a simulator probably for about two or three weeks. So some people need more time on the simulator before they get into an airplane. Um, then, um, so you have to pass a knowledge exam before you get to fly an airplane. Uh, once you've done all that and you pass your simulator, you start flying. Um, once you get to the flying part, you just fly every single day until you are able to uh, master all of the uh, skills that you have. Another percent of your skills are basically emergency landings. Um, so after that, and as long as the FAA tech instructor thinks that you are safe and sound, then you get yourself a awarded a pilot's license. Um, uh, Regular private pilot's license isn't a license that you can fly for work in. Um, you still have to get different type ratings for different types of aircrafts, instrument ratings, that kind of stuff. So, um, but if someone wanted to go to school, I would say go to flight school, um, have at least 150 to 200 K saved up for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. My uh, my private pilot's license, I did it in 79 hours. The national average at the time was 80 hours, and it cost us about 50 grand. Wow. Were you scared that first time you went up to fly? Yeah. I know you were. I almost threw up. I can imagine. Like, how <laughs> the do you, first how time do you... I landed on myself, I almost threw up. Yeah. So how do you get over that? Do you just say, hey? This may be the end. Do I love it that much? You know, what do no, you, what do you I do? was very scared of my aircraft at first. Um, mm. And then I had a really good instructor and he did these things called flying leafs with me one day. Um, and basically you do full throttle and you're you're going as fast as you can and you pull your yoke back. So that means that your airplane goes all the way up in the air and then you cut your power and you push your nose down. So then you start to fall this way. So it kind of creates that sensation of going over a roller coaster. Wow. So I did that a few times. I got over my fear instantly and I was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. <laughs> and um, after that, it, it was pretty much history. Like you couldn't get me out of a plane after that. So <laughs> are you one of those that are on a flight nowadays when it's crazy turbulence and you're just sitting there with your legs crossed, just chilling? Yeah, just chilling or sleeping. I sleep <laughs> on like once the airplane gets that once they turn the engine on then it like puts me to sleep it's like very serene it's like <laughs> yeah that's some of the best white noise <laughs> now i'm sure you have a love of travel if you have if you have your pilot's license where tell me the places that you've been in the world and then where's your favorite place on earth and why Okay, so I have worked in Colombia, South America, Afghanistan, um, and in Dubai. Um, on top of that, and that's just outside of the states. It, within the states, um, I've lived in and worked in Florida, um, Texas, Louisiana, Virginia. Um, my favorite place out of all of them, um, Dubai is really fun. Um, it's super superficial. Um, so it's fun to go, but, um, it's just not my speed. I'm very down to earth. Um, so I had a blast in, in, in Dubai, but my absolute favorite was Columbia. Mm -hmm. Big mixture. They know how to live life. They take, uh, their three-day holidays seriously. You'll get groups of, of people together. Different families will come together and rent houses for the weekend or for an entire week. Um, the food is delicious. The party is just absolutely out of this world. The dancing is like no other. So um, I really enjoy Colombia. And you get all you get different races when you're down there, too, all different types of races. So it's um, very culturally mixed. Um, and just the food, the scenery, uh, the history. So I, I like Colombia. It's probably my favorite. I spent five years there in two different settings. Wow. So two and a half years and two and a half years. 
Okay. Nice. Nice. Now, after college. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Now, now you're a contributor to the HBCU Experience College Hill. What can yes. people expect to gain from your contribution? So my contribution, um, it's mainly about not letting your circumstances define who you're going to be. Not letting the now define what your future is. So I was faced with lots of obstacles. I had, I grew up, my, my father was a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. um, and when he left the SEALs, like his line of work was going out to war zones. So my father was never there. My mother was, uh, she has, uh, she has mental disorders. Um, in that sense, she tried every way to prevent me from going to school. A lot of um, a lot of parents who have that attachment and issue with their kids, and they're like, "I want you to be here, whether you're going to flourish or not." Um, had to figure things out really early. Um, I feel like every step of my of my process, like I've won a little bit, and then all of a sudden, like disaster. <laughs> Like there's like I get past this one road bump and now there's a crater I have to cross. Um, so for me, it's important to let kids know that a there are different methods about be becoming successful. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to become an influencer. Those aren't the only ways. Um, you can also go to a trade school. You can get certificates um, like you see my my wall of degrees over here. It's not just degrees, it's degrees and certificates. Because I learned that if you couple a certificate with your degree, you have more to offer than everybody else who just went and got a degree. Was it a little harder? Did it cost a little bit more money? Yes, it did. Did I cry a lot? Yeah, I did. But at the end of the day, it makes me more valuable. You know, so I want people to know that no matter what you're faced with, like just continue to look outside of the box for opportunities. You know, when I got out of, uh, I wasn't able to graduate from Virginia State. Yeah, I couldn't afford it. I didn't have a place to live. I, we left college till I was still homeless, you know? So I went back home, I went to Tidewater Community College. Um, I was presented after I got my associate's degree with an opportunity to go overseas to work in Afghanistan. So it wasn't much. I was making like forty five thousand a year to go in, to work in a war zone where people were making easily two, three, four hundred grand to to live and work there. Um, but I didn't think about that. I was like, I just need to get out now. I need to do something. Risks. I wasn't afraid to get out and try something new. And that endless desire and and reaching of I'm not going to let these things that are clouding, you know, just because I can't see the end of the tunnel doesn't mean that it's not there. So that's basically what I want people to get out of it. Like you can be wild and crazy and have all kinds of fun. Um, but at the end of the day, like, what are you doing to advance yourself? And I want people to know that, yeah, I had tons of fun throughout my life. I had more fun than most people can say. I have partied in more countries than most people can say. But at the end of the day, like I worked hard where I was going. And it was because I was able to think outside of the box. I was able to look for opportunities that most people would be like, mm, I don't know about that. And I'm like, well, the opportunity is there. So I'm going to go test it out. So um, I guess that's the most important part for me. You know, and more people. My bad. No, that that was that was really good. More people need to hear that because a lot of people don't hear. Um, everybody hears all the highlights. They don't hear that you know sometimes you have to you know take some detours to to reach all your goals. So more, especially more young women. More young women need to hear that because this is not easy and. You know, within the social media world that we live in, everybody portrays it as being an easy route to become successful, and it's not. So, thank you for sharing. That. No, not easy. I would say from from the time where I graduated high school until I 
until I left to go to, oh, until, until right before I left to go to Afghanistan in 2010, I was homeless for m- much of that time, just mm-hmm. living with different people. Um, that's like almost 10 years of, you know, not having roots anywhere, you right. know, and it's, is it embarrassing? Yes. It's very embarrassing in the moment. It is, sometimes it's still embarrassing to talk about it, but at the same time, it's necessary and I'm willing to allow myself to feel embarrassment about the situation if someone else is hearing this and they say, hey, I'm homeless right now. Maybe that means that there's still hope for me. Maybe that means that I can change the trajectory of where I'm going just by, you know, saying, you know what, I'm not going to let this feeling of defeat overcome me. You know, I'm going to start, you know, digging. I'm going to start crawling and and walking, you know. Absolutely. That picture behind you is great. What What is that picture? I love the colors on that. That is actually a picture of myself. Um, okay. My dad got a famous painter in uh, from Colombia who had his work in uh, the Louvre to paint mm. this. He commissioned this painting for my birthday, for my 35th birthday. <laughs> nice, nice. Now tell me about those certificates. Excuse me? Tell me about those certificates you have on the, on the other wall. The certificates, okay, uh, well, over here. So these two, this is from Louisiana State University. That's my MBA. Um, this is my Bachelor of Science from in Business from University of Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one actually got to end into the honor society. The other two are a graduate certificate in analytics. I got that at LSU while I was getting my MBA and this uh, project management undergraduate certificate I got at the same time I was doing my Bachelor of Science in Business. Nice. It was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of being very savvy about how I decided to go to school. Uh, I just met you, Bianca, but I'm super proud of you proud of you. You know, you have a, you have <laughs> a heck of a story. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. What can we expect from you in the future and how can people get in touch with you? Um, so they can get in touch with me um, on Instagram. Um, my handle on Instagram is fly away little bird. Um, on Facebook, my, uh, my handle, I believe is birdie Oliva's um, Hispanic people take the father and their mother's last name. Mm. So, um, Bertie Olivo Gonzalez is how you can find me on Facebook. Um, in the future, currently I just got a job with the Navy. Um, oh, so I oh. work in operations and I'm a performance analyst. Um, so I do a lot of analytics, which is awesome because I just got my analytics certificate in that. Um, so I plan on laying low a little bit with this, but also, um, definitely supporting the HB, HBCUs, um, the movement behind College Hill. Um, I think that it's great because it gives visibility to HBCUs. Series like College Hill, you know, they reach a demographic of people which might be firstly we have to look at the series with the lens of they're just taking bits and pieces from your total experience but i mean you can have a lot of fun in college you do have to learn things in college and learning things in college is very fun um but so i i continue i want to continue to support their movements um i'm also thinking about writing um a book um, I actually have a few ideas for books that I'm um, in the process of getting my notes and stuff together, um, talking about uh, being raised under a household with parents who are mentally ill, um, and also kind of like uh, the mixed experience. Um, I don't think people, I, I think that it's still not as widespread the story of someone who has to grow up in a mixed environment 
you know, little things like when your white mom doesn't know what to say, you know, or when your black dad says something and you're looking at him like, well, that's not really appropriate, <laughs> you know, so that dynamic right there. Um, I want to dig deeper into that. Other than that, I'm supporting my dad on a business venture that he has. We they are doing CBD products um, mm -hmm. for sports. So they have some cream that uh, are kind of like icy hot, but it has like CBD in it. Um, mm -hmm. They have like cooling lotions as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's on um, Maconda, M-A-C-O-N-D-A dot C-O mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, we just got all of their approvals, kind of like the FDA equivalent in Colombia. Um, mm -hmm. So we're working on bringing those products to the States um, pretty soon with hopefully within the next year. Um, we also have products for the face as far as like plastic surgery and stuff. Their products actually heal patients faces after plastic surgery in about half of the time. Awesome. So I've got a lot of different things going on. I also try to just lay low and, and enjoy my time with my family. I just got back to and family that you can go and talk to after work and stuff. Awesome. That's awesome, Bianca. Well, thank you for taking the time. I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to talk. I'm glad you got a chance to tell your story. I'm glad you're part of the uh, the the new book that's coming out. It'll be out by the time this comes out. And I want to wish all the best to you. All righty. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to let everybody know, like, be a light in someone's life. Like, be a light in someone's life. Um, doesn't matter whose life. Like, just find someone and be a light because you never know that light that you that you are for someone else. You never know how that's going to change their life. So um, there are plenty of people, and I like to thank them all. But I'll just say, you know who you are. Um, that have been lights in my my life. And um, I do want to, you know, kind of like challenge people like do better, be better, you know, be a light to other people. So that I'll awesome. just leave you guys with that. <laughs> That's a great way to end it. Thanks, Bianca. You're a light. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Todd. You have a great evening. Okay, you too. All right.